So today we celebrate New Church Day, which is a day that we celebrate every year on June 19th. But what is New Church Day? What is the significance of June 19th? Why is that a day that we celebrate in the New Church? Well, growing up, what I was always told was that June 19th was the church's birthday. And that makes sense, and it's good. It makes sense to celebrate your church's birthday every year. But what does that really mean? Does that mean that June 19th was the day that this building was built? That on June 19th, this was finished, and then people in Oak Arbor had a place to worship? No, that's not it. Does that mean that that was the day that the general church, the the parent organization that Oak Arbor is a part of, is that the day that, that that got incorporated? Is that what birthday we celebrate on June 19th? No, on June 19th what we celebrate is the the establishment of the spiritual new church. And we're told in the teachings for the new church that the new church, the Lord's church, is universal. And it's with all people who look to the Lord and live the life of charity. But what created the new church, really, what set this new era going in the world was a revelation that the Lord gave us. It's a new understanding of the Word, of how these stories from thousands of years ago tell us all about our lives, about the issues that we face, and about the steps that we can take to move forward. And those teachings, that understanding that we have, was given to us by the Lord through the theological writings of Emanuel Swedenborg where Swedenborg, over the course of many years, wrote and published many books that tell us about the internal meaning of the Word and help us to understand who the Lord is and what spiritual life is all about. But what is June 19th in all of this? Well, Swedenborg wrote and published all of these books that we have here. And the very last book that he wrote, the last book out of all of this, was a book called The True Christian Religion. And The True Christian Religion takes a lot of the teachings that are in all of these books and really puts them together, and and it gives us a snapshot of this is what it really means to be a Christian. This is what it means to go to the Lord in His Word and live a good life. And this was the final work of all of this. When this work was finished... The revelation was complete, and we had all of the teachings that we needed to walk forward into the new era of the new church. And when this work was finished, Swedenborg went back and he added a note at the very end. And I want to read that note. It says, After this work was finished, the Lord called together His twelve disciples who followed Him in the world, And the next day he sent them forth into the whole spiritual world to preach the gospel that the Lord God Jesus Christ reigns, whose kingdom shall be forever and ever, according to the prediction of Daniel and in the book of Revelation. And also that they are blessed who come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This took place on the 19th day of June in the year 1770. This is meant by these words of the Lord in the Gospel of Matthew. He shall send his angels, and they shall gather together his elect from one end of the heavens to the other. So when Swedenborg finished that last book of the writings, when he finished the true Christian religion, the Lord gathered together all of his disciples who followed him in the world, And he sent them all throughout the spiritual world to spread the good news that the Lord God Jesus Christ reigns and that his kingdom shall be forever and ever. The Lord, through the process of giving us this revelation, of giving us these teachings about how we're supposed to live, he overcame the forces of evil. And most importantly, through giving us these teachings, he restored our freedom so that we are able to choose in freedom the way that we want to live, whether we want to walk in love to the Lord and follow in His footsteps, or if we want to follow after our own ideas and our own loves and what will serve us. 
because our freedom is what the Lord cherishes above all else. Now, in a moment, we will have an enactment that's taken from the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is a book that has confused people for hundreds of years or thousands of years because it's filled with a lot of incredible imagery and people don't really know what to make of a lot of these stories. But in the new church, we're told that everything in the book of Revelation represents a process that was going on in the spiritual world when the Lord was giving us these new teachings. It represents the ways in which these new truths, these new ideas changed the world. The ways in which it fought against the forces of evil that were at play at the time and the way in which it delivered people into a new era where they could live in freedom and in happiness. The story we will be acting out comes from the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation, and it includes the woman clothed with the sun who gives birth to a male child, but there's a big fiery dragon who's right there ready to torment her and her child. This story represents for each one of us that the truths that the Lord has given us in the new church need to be protected in our hearts. The teachings of the new church are all about how we need to overcome our selfish human nature and focus on loving and caring for other people. This is what the woman and her child represent in the story. But there's a part of all of us that doesn't like that, that doesn't want to follow that, there's a part of all of us that wants to chase after what we think will make ourselves feel good. There's a part of all of us that likes to feel justified and important and that we are good people just because of who we are or what we believe. And that's what's represented by the dragon. And that attacks the part of us that needs to overcome that and live a good life. So as we watch this enactment, and hear this story, I would invite us all to think about how we can honor the Lord's Word and keep it safe in our hearts so that we can go out and live the heavenly life that the Lord wants for each and every one of us. Amen. We will now sing our uh, next hymn, and afterwards we will move right into the enactment. And if anyone would like to move forward to get a clearer seat of the enactment, now would be a good time to do it. Please rise for our next hymn.